Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is 10.01 in the evening. Do not repeat. Do not attempt to adjust your television. The picture you are seeing right now is very, very dark. There is a reason for that. So far, this week, Clown has lost two friends. Within the month, he's actually lost three, but let me rephrase that. Clown has lost one friend that he knew personally, and a friend of his has lost their mother. That's why Clown's kind of having a, a rough kind of week. So tonight's show is not going to be a normal kind of clown time. This evening, we will sit together and we will try our best to say goodbye to people that we hadn't had a chance to say goodbye to. Because now is our time to sit there and say, I didn't know you were leaving, and goodbye, my friend. So, hang on a second. You got the time. Hey. Howdy. How are you? I'm well. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to that you didn't get a chance to? Um, okay, that's cool. I'll start. There was a friend of mine I saw on Saturday that passed away yesterday from a brain aneurysm, and Shaker, you were my friend, you were a companion in building sets, you were somebody I thoroughly respected, you were somebody who brought that table saw of yours into our building area and saved our backs and so many times you saved our asses by helping out tremendously on projects that we didn't get a chance to work on so thank you shaker and goodbye good evening hi it is Kelly, and I just lost my pet mouse, Freddy. I'm so sad. So you'd like to say goodbye to your pet mouse, then? Yes. What was your pet mouse's name? Freddy. Goodbye, Freddy. Goodbye. And then the other person I would like to say goodbye to is a friend of mine's mom. Now, his mom had Lou Gehrig's disease to where her body was slowly degenerating. And I got her when she was in the state where she was going slightly, but I had the opportunity to at least meet her and even in her weekend state when I was there to take care of her um she was a pistol and you could tell that this was somebody who at one time and still 
at that time was full of life. To Kevin's mom, goodbye. Good evening. Hello. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Um, nobody I'd like to say goodbye to. I'd just like to say see you later to my grandma and my granddad. And I just started doing a CNA class, and I've had two days clinical working, and let me turn it down just for a second there, buddy. That's all right. You're good. Instead of buddy, I should say brother. But uh, I'd say to anybody that misses their grandparents and longs for their company, just go work at a rest home, and you get to see your grandparents every day. Every day. They're just right there. They're right there. That that's true. And uh, an interesting thing about a rest home is you get to see your grandparents in different stages because th there are those who who have left, but the body remains, and there are those who are there that are still sharp as tacks and will get you when you aren't expecting it. That's sure too. That's sure, sure true. What a treat. Um, have we ever swapped names before? We've yacked a couple of times, but uh, my name is Moses. You are Moses. Good evening, Moses. I am Booger J. Clown. Cool. So, yeah, this tonight is not a normal night. Like I said, I've... I uh, I drove to Oklahoma City last night, and I caught a flight back this morning at about 7 o'clock to go back to work. <laughs> and I worked all day, and I'm enjoying the kind of fuzz that makes it so where you've taken something and you've pushed it aside by doing things, and you have now made the circle to come back to be able to deal with them. So, so Moses says goodbye to the grandparents. Cool. I say see you later. That's right. I, I, until we meet again, like Lawrence Luck, we, like Lawrence Welk would say. You know what? I want to share with you something from Lawrence Welk. I, uh, much to the chagrin of uh, Stoner Friends, years ago I recorded the 25th silver anniversary of Lawrence Welk, and something so sweet and funny that I noticed, you know, just like American Bandstand, people are dancing together and they see each other on the camera or on the screen, you know, like, oh, the camera's showing us, You're right? And there was an old couple dancing, and this is a black and white Lawrence Welk, and there was a sweet old couple dancing, and... The one, the man said to the wife, as they're dancing along, I could read their lips. And and as they're like keeping big grins on, he says to his wife, smile. And, you know, they're smiling. And he and his wife says, I am <laughs> with a smile. And uh, they kept on dancing and smiling and uh uh, a lot of people love you, and a lot of people love grandparents. Uh, next caller. Talk to you later, bro. Hey, do you remember how Lawrence Welk used to end it? Well, how would he do it? Adios. Au revoir. A vida zane. Good night. That is so... That, man. That, <laughs> uh, Have a great evening, Mr. Moses. You too, bro. Peace. Good evening. Hey, can we sing a song together? No, t t t tonight, tonight we are saying goodbye together. We're we're not singing together. But this is a this is a goodbye song. This is a what? A goodbye song. What song is it? Lean on me. What song? Lean on me. 
we, we can lean on each other. Lean on it's me not. when you're not, not strong, strong, and I'll be your friend. friend. I'll help I'll you carry on, on, for it <laughs> won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. on lean on me good song thank you thank you yeah that's that's where my wife is right now my wife is in Oklahoma City with our friend because she had given her word and that's why I drove all night to make sure that uh, I helped my wife keep her word by being with our friend in his time of need. So that is where my wife is right now in Oklahoma, keeping her word. Good evening. Yeah. Yes. How may I help you? I, I want to say goodbye to uh, my grandfather. Cool. Was he? Uh, oh, turned on your TV just a little bit. We're going to talk on your phone, and you're just going to hear it on your TV later. So just turn your TV down just a little bit. Yes, I, I want to say goodbye to my grandfather. He uh, he passed away uh, the day after he turned uh, 88, and he was a um, he was a great man. Sweet, sweet. Now. Was this something that came suddenly, or were you guys kind of expecting it? No, um, he uh, he been fighting some cancer, and uh, he's ready to go home. That's what he said. He said, "I'm ready to go home." Good, good. Then, then he 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 had the opportunity. He chose his time, and he knew when he was ready to go. And he had he had probably talked to somebody and made an arrangement where he had his oh, ADA. He had, um, Whenever my, my grandmother died about 22 years ago, he paid for the funeral. Then uh, he, he paid for the exact same arrangement. He just doubled up. And uh, so there was no, uh, the family didn't have to pay a single thing. Uh, he just, um, he was a very wise man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. It's like he must have dug the arrangement. It's like, you know what? I'd like that. So go ahead. He was a child of the depression. Oh yeah, somebody yeah. who somebody who truly appreciated everything they had. They Absolutely. Worked worked hard, played hard and loved well and really appreciated every breath he took. I appreciate the vibe of your uh, show uh, this evening. I I've, I've caught you a few times before flipping through the channels late and uh, I definitely appreciate the vibe of your show this evening. Yeah, like like I said, when when you have back to back days where people you know are no longer here, you you want to give people the chance to say goodbye. So, Grandpa, happy eighty eighth, and goodbye. And then one last shout out. Go ahead, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> May you lay in the finest Corinthian leather. Ah, uh, how because nice. Boss, it is the plane. In your Cordoba. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Peace, brother. Good evening. Hi. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Hi. Okay. Good evening. Oh. <sighs> I, uh, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to say goodbye to my grandfather, but I did, I did have the opportunity to say goodbye to my father before he went. He uh he started to get Alzheimer's but before it got too bad I had the the luxury 
of being able to tell my dad how proud I was of him. Good evening. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Yep, I want to say goodbye to my friend Donnie. What, what, uh, how, how did he, how did he go? A uh, cancer. Bummer. Um, was it quick or was it a slow? Well, he was diagnosed in May and uh, passed away in November. Sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. What was your biggest fight you ever had with him? Biggest fight? Yeah. Oh, on the basketball court. <laughs> uh broke his arm. Oh, now that's that is a mean game. I didn't even want to play. But he said, "No, no, come on, come on, chicken, play." And then you you got up, you roughed house, and you snapped his arm, huh? <laughs> and then you look so at him and you say, "Hey, this is your fault cuz you wanted me to play." His mom wouldn't let me play with him anymore for like 2 months after that. <laughs> Hey, it's not my fault. He wanted me to do this. I didn't even want to play. Okay, what was what was one of your better memories? Oh, uh, uh, riding mini bikes, racing motorcycles around when we were kids. I told his uh, daughters that we were in a motorcycle game together, and their mouths dropped. And I said, "Yeah, it consisted of us and one mini bike." <laughs> <laughs> Two guys, one mini bike, and a whole lot of like blue jeans burning on the asphalt. Right. <laughs> Sweetness. Cool. You see, yeah. anybody who says they don't have memories of fights with anybody else is BSing because that's what you always remember sometimes. is like, damn it, had a fight with him and I wish I could have said goodbye. Yeah. But memories are cool too because you always have some good ones mixed in there as well. Anything else you'd like to say to him besides goodbye? Well, I, I liked, uh, I went back this summer. He lived out in the country and I um, uh, went back and we worked on a canoe. He got this old canoe and we're sitting there working on it. And uh, after about three or four hours, I looked up and I said, you know, this is all we used to do when we were kids was work on stuff. And uh, so I'm kind of glad we got to work on that thing. And um, I got to see pictures of him when he took it out on the lake and actually got the go canoeing out in it with him and his, his kids and his uh, his grandkid. Oh, sweetness. Do you know where the canoe is now? Yeah, it's it's still it's a, it's at his uh, at his house, which is where his daughter lives now. You you should take it out. I, I should. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. Take take a fishing pole. No, take <laughs> two. Yep. Take two, put one at each end. You fish with one, you fish as the other. Right. And and I'll bet you anything, I'll bet he'll catch more fish than you that day. Yeah. Well, and it was Donnie, right? Yeah, Donnie. Donnie, thanks for the thanks for the skin knees. I didn't tell you I told you I didn't want to play, but it's it was your own fault and goodbye. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. My pleasure. Have it easy. Yeah, man, I mean, let's face it, if if you're not remembering hard times you had with somebody, you you aren't getting the full picture. Good evening. Hey, will you just for for those just joining the show, will you re describe the uh loss that you're experiencing that you know Oh, oh, why well, I'm doing this tonight? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I have, I have lost a couple of friends, or I, I lost one friend, and a friend of mine lost his mother, who I had the opportunity and the privilege to meet, and my one friend died. Let's see Wednesday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. And I had actually seen him last Saturday. We were at a gathering for the 20th anniversary for the Vortex. And we had talked. And me and him 
had shaken hands and said, we'll see you on the next build when we go to build sets for the, uh, the next incoming show. And it's a matter of, we, we left parted friends. It's just that you wish you had a better chance to say goodbye, so goodbye. And then my friend's mom, who had Lou Gehrig's disease, passed away. And my wife is currently up in Oklahoma City with him as he deals with that. Um, and she was, you know, in a somewhat immobile state, but still getting around in her chair. And she was still just real vibrant, even though the body was going, the, the spirit was still there heavily. Okay. So, so to her, uh, goodbye. Okay. Well. Also, also earlier this month, a friend of mine's dad passed away who got me started having the itch to go race uh, stock cars. When we, when we lived in Corpus, um, he used to run like small little four-cylinder Pinto kind of cars around the, their quarter-mile track, you know, yeah. the oval. And we used to help him in the pits, and I'm running up at Thunder Hill now because he started me on that bug. So, Mr. Carpenter, uh, thank you for the inspiration to go out and start racing, and good luck in the grease pits, and goodbye. They got grease pits in heaven. Um, oh, you know it. You know it. And number three is burning up the track somewhere. I'll just say briefly, uh, my brother passed away probably 11 years ago, but of course it was just yesterday. And uh, he was 15 years old, and I know people speak fondly of people who have passed, you know, like, oh, they're the greatest person you'd ever want to meet, but truly, he would have been one of your best friends. And uh, he accidentally hung himself, I think, as a prank to uh, frighten his stepmom, who had told him he couldn't have any friends over that night. And it didn't pan out right. But I had a little dream the night after having found out about it. And... Uh, you know, one of those lucid dreams where you suddenly discover that you're dreaming. And he punched me in the arm, and I, his name was Andrew. <laughs> and I said, why did you do it? And he said, it was an accident. Now, either that was my mind making it all okay, or it was a genuine so-called visitation. I'd I'd say it was a visit, visitation, and I'm sure somewhere in there the words "dumbass" <laughs> right. came up. Absolutely. And a few other words like "whoops," "damn it," "miscalculation." Dad, bur Dad to burn it. Um, <laughs> also, before uh, I pass the mic, uh, you, you kind of referenced "sound of music." You know, you talk about uh, au revoir, farewell, sounds beaters. Yeah, you. yeah, Lawrence Welk, yeah. Okay, can I can I just share a snippet of Edelweiss? No, kick it. Kick it up hard. Okay, thanks. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, every morning you breathe. Soft and white, clean and bright, you look happy to greet me. Blossom of snow 
sweet. That rocked. Thanks. Good evening. What's going on? Anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Yeah, my fish Young Money died today. Another fish died today, huh? What kind of fish was he? He was just a regular beta fish, but they set off fire alarms in our apartment, and I think it killed him. The high pitch. Ouch. I'm not sure exactly, but he was swimming around very happily for one minute, and I looked down, and he had face planted into the rocks at the bottom of the bowl and never moved again. Dang. I don't know. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah, I mean... Uh, it's hard on the streets on Riverside. You gotta grind every day and he can only he only lasted four days. Ouch. And 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 by the way, I'd like to say goodbye to whoever the the first homicide of Austin. It also happened on Riverside. Yeah, R Riverside over by the uh the clubs toward the east side, um are yeah. it's not the most friendly place in the world. No, I mean you come to our apartment, we're very friendly, but uh Apparently across the street where he, the guy was shot, they're not as friendly. Yeah, um, up on the hill is okay, but if you look down on the parking lot, it's like watching the... Uh, we used to... Me and a friend of mine used to take his pickup truck over to the parking lot of the Okie Doki Club in Waco when we were going to school, and we wouldn't go in the club. We'd just grab a six-pack of beer and two lawn chairs and park in the edge of the parking lot. Just to watch the fights out in the parking lot after the bar was closing. Yeah, but I, um, sounds like a good idea over here. When you, you might catch a stray bullet out in the middle of the night. So. Yeah, well, that's why you stay up instead of going down. So. True, true <laughs> plan. Good idea. Okay, well, goodbye, Mr. Fish. Okay. Good luck. Yeah, I... Uh, I got a chance to say goodbye to my dad, and I once I once wrote my dad a Father's Day card, and they kind of they read it at the funeral kind of thing. But it was it was thanking my father for all the things he didn't do. It's like, dear dad, thank you for not coming home drunk. Thank you for not beating on me for no reason. Thank you for not cheating on my mom. Thank you for not always saying that you were right and we were never were. Dear Dad, thank you for all the things you didn't do. Didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my grandfather. And that's kind of hard, too, because that's kind of a sore point between me and family. It's really weird how sometimes a death will go ahead and finish a split that has already been developed. But maybe it's supposed to be that way. You never know. Come on, children. You usually have tons of things to say when I'm running a happy little crazy time show. Good evening. Clown. Yes. Why, why aren't you showing yourself on TV? Because this is kind of a dark show. I mean, if you're going to say goodbye to somebody, you do it in a very quiet, very easy manner. You don't sit there and put bright lights and a big circus tent up to say goodbye to your buddies. Unless, of course, it was like G.G. Allen or something. But it's kind of a quiet show to where 
we're saying goodbye to people we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to. You you got anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Well, it's my first time to watch the show, and I want to see what you look like. I don't have my makeup on right now, and it's against clown union rules that you can't see me unless I have my makeup on, so I'm sorry. Maybe if you tune in next week. How's that? Clown, um, I, I, I kind of missed out for a little while. I, I missed the show during the summer. I can't remember if you ever said, but where is your mother? Where's old Diddy? Um, Mom will be probably back in about two or three weeks. Right now she's up in Oklahoma playing um, bingo on the reservations. What? Why is she up in Oklahoma? She doesn't go to like Louisiana or anything? Uh, no, no, no. She likes Oklahoma. It's uh, better money for the bingo. Okay, so you have your makeup on next week, though, right? Yeah, next week will be totally different. Okay, yeah, because you're, you're kind of freaking me out. I can kind of see on your TV, and you're going to give me very scary fucking dreams tomorrow. <laughs> or tonight. Yeah, I, I understand. Tonight's just not the kind of show to you, but that's cool. Good evening. Hi. Um. Well, I'd like to say goodbye to my grandmother, who uh, died in July. I didn't really get a chance to say goodbye to her. I saw her. Um, she died of a number of things. Uh, breast cancer, um, pneumonia, and um, you know the thing? I forgot what it's called. Um, yeah, I, I know I know what you basically, basically about three or four things jumped on her and just tackled her and wouldn't let her up. Yeah, basically. Um, I spent a month in Houston, and um, I kind of wish I went down there earlier because I wanted to talk to her. I didn't really, none of the family really told me for sure, you know, how bad it really was up until the point to where basically she couldn't talk anymore, and the doctors were basically putting her under all the time. And um, I remember visiting her a couple times the first week I came down, and um, the only way I could tell that she was uh, listening was uh, I saw her heart rate go up and her pulse rate, and that was all I, you know, could tell. And uh, I'd say by far that's the hardest death I've had to deal with, and I'm almost 24. And, uh, and in fact, her death has kind of brought a lot of the family together, um, which is kind of odd, I guess, because the family always just argues, and this time um, there was no arguing. As would, far as... Was, 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 was your grandmother a fairly strong-willed woman? Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Kind of, kind, of, kind of like Iron Fist Grandma? Oh, yeah, she uh, she did it her way. In fact, that was a song playing at her funeral. It was, everything was, it's my way or the highway. You can join me if you don't like what I do. Well, oh, well. Yeah, you see, that's, that's, that's why the family's not having issues at the minute, especially around Grandma, because everybody's respect for Grandma's iron will keeps them in line because even though she's not there physically her presence is still felt and you know for a fact that if you start something you're going to get a wooden spoon across your knuckles somehow yeah and my my grandmother died in 96 um it was horrible the family just basically tore apart her house you know, putting stuff on sale, arguing, bickering, you know, you name it, it was it was all arguing. And, you know, I was actually kind of shocked, I guess, being an adult now and not having to deal with that. When I go back down to Houston this uh, next week, um, I'm going to get a big portion of my grandmother's stuff, mainly because I lived with her from, you know, a couple years when I was a child and then a couple years when I was an adult. And so it, it's just... It's really difficult, and I can't talk to some of my family members about my meanwhile because, um, well, they get really upset, and I understand, but, you know, I think at some point 
I guess it's better to talk about it than to act like it never happened. Yeah, you see, the 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 one sweet kind of like laid back, easy grandmother. They'll they'll tear into that like you know rabid dogs on a fresh kill because it's like she always had everybody a little bit of something, so everybody's going to take what they want. But the iron willed grandmother. People are going to be upset because they aren't getting what they want, but the only reason that's happening is because she said they don't deserve it. Well, she had no will. Oh, even better. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'm getting, and I know she doesn't have a whole lot of stuff that I guess is worth a whole lot. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a portion of her jewelry and other things, but not that that's important, you know, um... Okay, is uh, is is anybody bringing the hammer as far as lawyers and stuff? As far as what? Lawyers. Oh no. Okay, good. It's it's okay, good. It's strictly in inside family dirty fighting. Good. Oh yeah. Well, this is actually um, after she died. I talked to my aunt in Dallas, and she said, "Look, your aunt Charmaine, I." Your Aunt Debbie and Georgia all agree that you need, you can take pretty much the majority of her stuff. Your mother, who's in prison, well, she's not anymore now, um, will only get, like, dishes and stuff. You know, since you basically took care of her and she took care of you and you were the favorite granddaughter, you get, you know, basically whatever the family feels like. Right, That's right. You, you get first dibs. Yeah, basically, I have a I have, I have a pretty big box of stuff, and you know, I I never went to a funeral before. I've been to a wake before when back when my uh, grandpa's, um, well, no, I take that back. He was my uncle. My great great uncle died. Uh, his well, not him, but his uh, father died like at a hundred, and um, I went to his wake, and I was so freaked out. <laughs> So I didn't go to my grandmother's, and that was back in 2000. But I didn't go to my Meemaw's wake. But I went to the funeral, and um, before she was laid in the ground, I they opened the casket, and um, I saw her, and I just, it was really hard. You, It was hard looking in there thinking that she's gone. It, it, it is and it isn't because all, all you are observing in that box is a carcass. Yeah. The, the 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 person that was in there has basically, you know, put the vacancy sign on it and is no longer there. So looking at the body is kind of stiff. It's, well, it's kind of hard because it's bringing back the fact that it's the last time this is the way you're going to see that person. But you have to realize in the back of your head that what you're seeing there is kind of like a mannequin. Yeah. It I just it was really difficult. I didn't cry. In fact, the the weeks leading up to her death when I spent down in Houston, I uh you know, was taking pictures of the family and trying to I guess be like everything was okay and even before the funeral I was still like, "Oh, let's take pictures, blah blah blah," you know. And my cousin Brandy, she's like, "You know, you are having a hard time. You're just completely not even trying to yeah you're you're not dealing with it the the best way to actually deal with it though is when you go back to Mima's house and you start to look around to see what you do and don't want well her house is a you know hurricane ike came through and <laughs> they took most of her stuff out of there uh before the hurricane hit um but from what I understand, nobody can get into the condos because uh, there's so much damage. Oh, great! Um, so, but I will be able to uh, go visit her site, her gravesite, whenever I'm there, and I plan on writing a letter. But I'm having a hard time dealing with death. I, you know, this is basically well, aside from my grandma Slovak and my grandpa Slovak, I um, their deaths were really hard. That was '93, '96, and then this is the first time in a long time where I've basically been in denial about it because my grandparents, when they died, I was in, in denial about that. And, uh, you know, in 96, I had three deaths all in one year, and that was really hard. And, you know, this, I guess 
Okay, it was okay. In 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 ninety six, it was grandma, grandpa, and who? Um, my uncle. Okay, was it uh was it like your dad's brother or your mom's brother? Uh, no, it was my uh. Let's see, it was my. I don't remember exactly, but he uh. It's like your mom's sisters. Yeah, my mom's sisters. Aunt, Husband. Aunt or so I. I forgot exactly where he uh. Mm -hmm. Where he falls into that. Boy, that's, that sounds like a real busted up tree to begin with. <laughs> I, well, no, it's not. I just can't remember exactly where it. Where okay, it okay, goes. but the, but the other two grandparents did they die close to each other? Um. Well, let's see. My grandpa Slovak, or my grandma, my grandma Slovak died in '93, and he died uh, almost three years later. Okay. And uh, then after he died, it was my uh, Uncle Monty and my mamma, all three of which who I was really close with. Okay, okay. And so it was just, uh, you know, it's just... Okay, the, 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 first, the first person, don't, don't worry about the uncle, unless, he, unless you and him were really tight. Well, I mean, we used to make candy together. Um, yeah, but... but... Did, and stuff, and I was really young, so yeah, he had cancer. He had throat cancer, and that was hard to see him go through. Yeah, it was harder with my grandpa Slovak though that died ninety six. He uh, he had cancer as well. Um, he well, was, he, okay, Gr Grandpa, I can see because he would be closer to you. The, the uncle, I think, you have a harder time dealing with because the family was more torn apart about that because it was probably slow. Yeah. So you you weren't really having a problem with his death. You're having a problem with how the family around it dealt with it. Yeah. My uh my grandpa when uh he I saw him in the hospital, he was so bad that uh I remember walking in to his room and he wasn't in the ER or anything like that. I, I walked in, looked at him and I started crying and I was scared and he goes, why are you scared? Wendy, you have no reason. I'm still the same person. I'm like, I know what you're hurting and you're dying and you know, I, you shouldn't be able to die or something like that. <laughs> you know, it was really, I don't even how, how old were you? I, said. Oh, I was, I was in the sixth grade. So it was like 12. Okay. 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 So, I mean, it was really bad, and I remember I upset him, and he started crying. And then the next day, when I saw him again before I left to go back to Dallas, I, I wasn't so bad, but I was still upset. Well, you're 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 more upset for him than you are for yourself because when we are twelve, we feel that people that you personally really dig should stay around for a long time for you. Yeah. And they don't deserve what's happening to them. And you feel bad for them because, you know, they they deserve better because this is somebody I care about. They, they this shouldn't happen to them. Yeah. But, but what you need to do is you need to go back and look at it through their eyes. Because when they're in that situation, it's like, okay, I know this is coming. How old was he when he died? He was, I think, in his either late 60s or early 70s. Okay. My grandmother, when she died, she was a little bit younger than that. They were only about five or six years apart. Right, right. But When she died, he basically gave up on life. Right. So you got you got to figure that... In his way of looking at it, the cancer is basically not bothering him too bad because it's helping him get to where he wants to go. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it like that at all. Right, 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 right. But but that was then and this is now. Yeah. So the, the best way for you maybe to, to deal with this is go to the grave and say, I now understand 
when you said to me, why are you crying? Because this is helping me get to where I need to go. Yeah. Well, when I was younger, after they died, I started this thing. I guess it was a coping skill, I guess. I would take pictures of the graves every time I went. And That's I'd cool. Get them printed out or put them on the computer or whatever. It doesn't matter how many pictures I have of the grave. I I have hundreds of pictures of the grave sites, and I know that probably seems really weird, but uh, for some reason it. I guess yeah, it's it's cool. It's it's like it having a picture of somebody's headstones in your house is actually kind of cool because it helps you remember your past. Yeah. And that's that's kind of cool. But, yeah, I mean, go back and put yourself at that age when you were looking at him on the first round. But kind of switch in your head to say, now I know why you said, why are you crying? Yeah. And it's you, you now have can say i understand why you said that to me yeah so it's not really tear it's kind of like tears of sadness for ourselves because you hate to see them in that stage but you should be able to say it is tears of joy because you are on your way to be with who you want to be with this this world, this place no longer holds anything for you per se because what you miss the most is on the other side. So it is tears of joy that you are being helped on your way. Yeah. When uh, my Meemaw died, I, I didn't cry at the funeral. I Well, I held back pretty pretty good, but everybody else in the family was crying basically except for me. And I didn't actually cry really hard until actually until we got home. After the funeral, at the end of the day, after, you know, the people come over to your house and bring food. And it wasn't until after everything, you know, calmed down. That, Everybody picks their own time. And uh, it's, it's it's like, you know, it's 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 like if if you're not don't 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 pull like oh if, if I, I since I wasn't crying at the graveside there's something wrong no 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 everybody picks their own time because if you're busy comforting people or busy helping other people out you are dealing with the situation as it comes but then when all things are settled and done then you have now chosen your time yeah. to take care of yourself. I felt really bad for my cousin Haley, who uh, didn't get to say goodbye to Mimo at all because she was such in bad health, and the family didn't feel it was appropriate or right for uh, her to see her in the hospital in the condition that she was in. Um, she was in the hospital for about two months, but, you know, it, I know Haley will probably deal with it a lot better than... I did back when I was home. Well, you 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 it's should take you should take the photos that you have gathered, and go have lunch with her and show her the photos. The photos of all the grave sites that I've taken. Sure. I mean, I probably have hundreds. <laughs> that's that's cool. And that includes my uncle Miney and. My oh yeah, that that's. You would be surprised how fascinated people are of okay this is this person they are connected to next photo this person through next photo these people yeah. and this is where they rest you know photo of the big area and well looking in this direction and you can still see their house from you know where they rest and stuff like that so it might be actually pretty fascinating to them. Yeah. Well, a lot of my friends think I'm quite odd for uh, taking, I guess, n numerous, numerous pictures of, of grave sites that I only now get to see maybe twice a year. And, you know, it, when I was younger, when I used to go visit the graves, I wouldn't just, you know, take pictures. I'd, you know, kind of whisper to myself, 
you know, and put flowers out there and everything. And, you know, then I guess that's not the best way of coping. I sure it is. Say for it's, it's a great way of coping because it's remembering the times where you went to go say goodbye. So let's say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, and go visit and take more photos. And take her along with you next time you go. All right, I'll do that. There you go. Good luck. Thanks. Good evening. What's up? Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Uh, is this your last show or something? No, no, no. Um, This show is in honor of of people you didn't get a chance to say goodbye to. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to my friend Shaker, who I saw last Saturday but died on Tuesday. And we never knew that was coming. He died of an aneurysm in his sleep. So this is kind of like my show for people who didn't get a chance to say goodbye to somebody for them to be able to say goodbye. Understand. Anybody you want to say goodbye to? Yeah, I'll say goodbye to Roy Waters, who recently died in August. He's my friend. I've known him his whole life. Grew up across the street. Uh, you're 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 horse around and pretty well do everything with Buddy. Oh, uh, it's it's like my best friend's little brother is what who he was. So I'd act like he was my little brother and beat him up and shit. <laughs> That's what little brothers are for. You're supposed to beat up your little brothers. And the friend, too, that's like a brother. It's kind of weird. Beating them up also. Hey, you, you treat them just like family, and that's the way it is. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I would, He's like my little brother, so I'd beat him up, and he died in a motorcycle wreck. I never, last time I saw him, he told me to, you know, get lost, which is kind of weird. Went over to his house. He's like, "I'm gonna bring a bat out on you." <laughs> <laughs> no, were you were you constantly fighting, or is this just having no, to catch no, him on no, a bad no, day? No, I was just horseplay and beat him up when his brother would beat him up. Yeah, you you join his brother in like teasing him and stuff like that. Yeah, we were the older, like I don't know how much older, but yeah, we gave it to him tough sometimes, you know. Yeah, but but I'm sure he gave you back some good ones too. I bet. Yeah, one night he got drunk, he started hitting me in the face. He was kind of violent. And in the car, too. <laughs> Ouch. Like, his friend, he said something to his friend, his friend turns around, that's how it pretty much started, he just nailed him in the face. Well, like, you know oh, how uh, payback's... This guy's out of control, but I never got a chance to say goodbye, and he did die in that bike wreck. Well, would you like to say goodbye now? Uh... Well, I'm just saying goodbye by saying his name, by calling in. I feel kind of weird if I said that. That that's all right, man. That's cool. You you have now said goodbye, and that's cool. Also, another friend, Cy George. I want to say goodbye to him. He died in a uh, pickup truck wreck, eighteen wheeler. That was a little. Uh, that was it. A little bit uh, before this other one. But never got a chance to say goodbye to him. I saw we went and parted. I saw him. We went and parted at uh, Fast Eddie's pool hall. Yeah, I know where that is. He went on the other side of the bar and was ordering drinks off my tab. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see that guy over there? Put it on his tab. That's what he was saying. The tab jumped up pretty quick. I, oh, I bet. <laughs> see him work. on his way out the door. Hey, thanks for everything, pal. Yeah, he, he, they only went through, the credit card only went through for some of it, so he had to leave his ID up there. They knew he was the one ordering the drinks. <laughs> That's how you find out how your tab was getting up so fast, huh? It jumped up there. Dang him. But, I mean, I forgive him, you know, the last time I saw him. Hey, that means that you had the opportunity to buy the last round. Yep. Good enough. Say goodbye yeah. to him. All right, man. Thanks for having me on.
Hey, my pleasure. Have a good All night. Right. All right. That's kind of cool when sometimes things like that unexpected happens, but you look back at it and you realize that, yeah, it, it kind of screwed you over a bit, but if you had known that that was the last round with him you'd ever get to buy him, you would have done it happily, and you did. You didn't know it at the time, but you bought the last round, and that's cool. <coughs> Come on, kitties. Got a few more people out there who want to say goodbye to somebody. Let's see, who else do I need? Oh, good evening. Hello? Yes, good evening. Hello? I just tuned in, man. I mean, I just tuned in your show, man. What is this about? Um, what we're doing is we're sitting back this evening saying goodbye to people we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Those are the only people that passed away. Uh, my grandma, pretty much, you know. Um, yeah, I'd say goodbye to her now. Sweet. Goodbye, Grandma. Yeah. All right, dude. All right on. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, all right. Good evening. Hello? Hi there? Stay through the streets, bitch. Okay. Good evening. Hi, how you doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm doing well. Anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Yeah, I'd actually like to say goodbye to my papa Ray. He died over Christmas break, actually. Uh, you, you're, you're what? He was my papa Ray. Like, he wasn't actually my grandma's husband but he was like her living boyfriend oh okay i got gotcha, you i got gotcha. you he was pretty much my grandpa i got gotcha. you yeah. yeah so yeah he was pretty cool he taught me to play guitar and it was just sad that he died over christmas bummer man that'll that'll bring a whole lot of stoppage to your partying on christmas eve can but he's in a better place that's cool. How old was he? I believe he was about 78. Sweet. He beat the average by about three years. Um, was it sudden or was it expected to come? Um, It was expected. He started to like lose his head a little bit. So. Ah, yeah. The, the, the nuts and bolts were starting to come off the wheels, I understand. Right. So toward the end, like he was in the nursing home, and it wasn't too great. <clears throat> yeah, being being stuck in one of those places is not the best. So, would you like to say goodbye to him real quick? I'd love to say goodbye to him. Goodbye, Papa Ray. Thank you very much, my friend. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Peace. That's cool. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to lose people on the holidays more for ourselves than than them but it's it's all good man because maybe the best christmas present you could have is knowing that somebody you knew who was in pain is now at peace there are there are sometimes people that you kind of hope death will come to to put them at rest my uh my sister-in-law has a disease that basically her body attacks her nerve endings and she takes really really heavy painkillers and i hope for her that the pain will end soon good evening hello Anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? No, I just wanted to say what's up to you, clown. Oh, I'm just sitting here talking about some people I lost and 
Well, maybe maybe this will uh, bring back a little bit of happiness. Let me know if you remember the name Schwartz. I do. Yeah, what up? Yeah, Mr. Schwartz, who went to Colorado to go to school. No, 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 no. This is a different Schwartz, dude. This is the Schwartz that played a little song for you on his guitar, and you actually made it a little part of your theme song, like, years ago. Oh, yeah, I got you. Remember, we used to call you up with my buddies, we'd, <laughs> like, BFI and stuff like that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We'd block up, like, three phone lines and just keep calling you and harassing you. Oh, yeah, constantly, but that's okay. We we accepted the love that you guys sent. <laughs> well, it was all love, man. I know. There may have been, it may have sounded like hate, but it was all good. Yeah, it was, it was... It was consistent, which is nice, because then you know it's for real, and you know it's not really heartfelt. It's just a matter of, hey, I'm going to screw with you in any way I can. So, you know, FBU and all the gang, it's just like, yeah, I know you guys are bringing it, but it's all because it's just part of the world. Yeah, man, I mean, what else do we have to do at 3 o'clock in the morning on <laughs> Saturday when we're, like, 17 years old, man? Yeah, indeedy. No, I was... uh. I'm kind of in the dark tonight. I'm having a dark show because I lost a uh, couple of people I knew back to back. Who's that? Uh, a friend of mine's mom died of Parkinson's disease on Monday. And then a friend of mine who I used to work with at building stage and uh, sets for the Vortex Theater died on uh, Tuesday. And the guy who died on Tuesday, I, I had seen Saturday. And he looked normal and perfect, and he died of a brain aneurysm. Wow. Went to sleep, and goodbye, Charlie. So I never really got a good chance to say goodbye to him, so tonight I already have. Is there is there anybody who checked out on you suddenly that you really wanted to say goodbye to? Um, To be honest with you, Clown, no, man. Um, I haven't really lost anybody since I've been been in, a, in a, a an adult that you know understands what's going on everybody that I've lost in my life was when I was a kid so I really I really don't I mean I guess I could give a shout out to all the people like my grandma but she died when, she, when I was three so you know it wasn't like it wasn't a I didn't really understand what was going on you know yeah you were you were basically at the you were at the age of before realism came sneaking in and slapped you upside your head like yeah before i realized that you really can't do whatever you want in this world <laughs> yeah well it, it's it's a matter if 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 you lose them before the age of six it's basically you see a lot of grown-ups having problems if you lose them from like seven to twelve it's somewhat bugs you really bad because so they were stolen from you because you wanted to get to know that person better. And if you lose them from like 13 and up, then it's like, damn, I wish I would have had the chance just to say, you know, well, you know yo. What? There was this one cat. His name was uh, Alex. He was a good buddy of mine. And he uh, he died in a car accident on the way to work. Early in the morning, he was, I guess he was racing somebody, and it was wet outside, and, you know, he, they, they screwed up, and he hit a pole, and, and that was it. But the sad thing is, is me and my buddies used to hang out with him all the time, and one of his friends, basically, they got into an argument, and our, the friendship between all of us ended, and we really didn't chill for, like, two or three years, and then out of the blue, I get a call that, he died in a car accident, so it, you know it, it sucks that because of stupid drama we didn't really get to chill. So I like to say goodbye to Alex. That's cool. That's a good one. You see, that's that's the perfect thought. It's just like it's like you know we we had we had our split, but we, you know if you were to call me, I would have come and drank a beer with you. We, we still would have been cool. It would have been a little bit, and it would have grown a few things back together, but things happen between now and then so it's like well the sad the sad thing is is it wasn't even him the guy that died it was it was another buddy that we were all close with essentially 
he gave a story to the police that, he, I mean, he had to, and another friend went to jail for 30 days because of it. And ironically, when our buddy passed away, it brought us all together again. So it's kind of crazy how it all works out, you know? Yeah, you know, you know, it's it's called full circle. It's like I'll sing a song to burn somebody, but instead of doing, you know, five years myself, if he does 30 days, it's not that bad, and he'll forgive me eventually. Yep. So it's like, you know, but, and then the other guy comes out, it's like, you know what? You know, 30 days wasn't too bad because maybe that 30 days saved me enough because I was going down certain roads that, I was having a hard time turning back on in 30 days without the shit. It'll wake you up pretty good. So maybe it does save you in the end. I don't know, man. It's crazy how it all works. It is. It's just, just, just one big rolling rolling ball. Well, do, but... me, do me a favor, clown. Make sure that as long as you're living in this town, that I don't even care if it's once a year or twice a year, make sure to show yourself on the TV, man. Oh, yeah. No, no. Last, la last week I did. Next week I will. Is it going to be random times, or would you... No, no, every, every Wednesday, uh, 10 till 11.30. Uh -huh. That's my time. Yeah, I don't go late night anymore because they don't have late night here anymore. Really? Yeah. That sucks. Well, no, it, it's okay. I, I made a bargain with them. Instead of getting 60 minutes, I pull 90 because cool. I'm clown. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know yeah, what? Every... This is what I'll try to do for you, clown. I will try to get all my old buddies back who used to call you up and, and hassle you a little bit, and we'll see if we can get a little bit of the old rivalry going next week. Oh, nothing like a good screaming of... Oh, I you, you would have been proud of me last week. Some guys told me my show sucked, so I told them to pull the batteries out of the vibrator in their butt and put them back in the remote and change the channel. What did you call it? The salt lick. <laughs> yeah. What you should have told him to do the salt lick, man. Yeah, baby. All right, clown. I'm gonna let you peace out and chat to some of these other cats. You All right. Hey, night, catch bro. catch me next week, man. It's it's full wall, full full on war paint, and we be going at it. All right. It. All right, man. Peace, my peace, friend. Clown. Good evening. Hello. Hi. How are you? I can be, I can see you in the window. Uh, no, you don't see me in the window. Um, you're looking at your TV set. Are you watching me? No, I'm not. No, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm watching over you. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you on that one show the other day. Which one? I don't know the name of it, but you <laughs> said my joke wasn't that funny. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, you're sure. <clears throat> you see that that that's the perfect example is like even if it's not a family relative, if it's if it's a friend. I, I had a friend who I lived on the same block with when we lived back in Florida. And I heard later that they said he committed suicide with a gun. And I think I knew him well enough to say that it was probably more like an accident than a suicide. But to him, who was a friend on that block when I really had no others, goodbye, my friend. It's cool. Good evening. Clown? Yeah. Hey, I'm just tuning in, man. Uh, what the heck are you talking about? What's going on here? <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm here because I lost two friends in two days. And what I'm doing is I'm giving people the opportunity to say goodbye to people they didn't get a chance to say goodbye to. God, I'm sorry to hear that. Can you? T what happened to your friends? Uh, one person died of an aneurysm, and a friend's mom, who I dug, uh, died of Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay. Dang. 
And the guy who died of an aneurysm, I saw last Saturday. And Whoa. We were cool, and everything was fine, and Sudden. was looking to forward to working with him again. And then I get a phone call, and it's like, out the window. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to, my friend? Uh, no, but I do want to ask something. Where Have you been on recently? Because I haven't seen you on Friday nights. I always check. Is it right, no. Um... I'm on Wednesday nights now, every Wednesday from 10 till 11.30. Shit, I wish I would have known that, man. I've been checking Fridays for, like, I thought you went to San Antonio and split, but I guess you didn't. Okay, it's Wednesdays from when, tell me again? 10, 10 p.m. till 11.30. Okay, brother. All right, we'll see you next week. Later, later. Peace. Good evening. Hello? Hi, how you doing? All right, man. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Uh, no. Oh, one minute. Uh, no. One minute. Oh, well, I'd like to say goodbye to my girlfriend. Did she pass away? Huh? Did she pass away? Yeah. She did, uh... In a tragic, uh, <laughs> breast implant operation. Uh, l l let me guess. The, the, the moped that she was speeding away on got sucked into the backdraft of a quick-moving caterpillar bulldozer, and she got crushed to death. There you go, man. Okay. It's all right. It's all good. But yeah, I haven't thought about that friend of mine for a long time. And that was somebody who was kind of cool to me, and I never got a chance to say goodbye, so I did. And if you have friends that you have lost. Or grandparents that you never got a chance to say goodbye to. You should visit them. Or you should swing by your friend's, you know, mom and dad's house and talk about them with those people and share memories. Memories are a great way to say goodbye. Like, I remember the time that me and him, we worked on this car together for a long time, and the first time we fired that engine up, we were just all so happy, and we wanted to just put the wheels on it and go. Share your memories that you have of that person with their parents or something. Those are a great way to say goodbye. That's a very cool way. It also also helps you in a bit too because then, then you get to know your friends a little bit closer. And that's cool. Goodbye, Grams. My grandfather whose funeral I was unable to make, had the distinction of dying 10 feet from where he was born. My grandfather was born in that house. He lived his entire life in that house. And he died in the house just about 10 feet from where he was born. Now, him and my grandmother traveled around quite a bit in their camper and stuff, but always they lived in that house. Ain't too many of those around, man. My grandfather was cool. 
Good evening. Hey, I have a, uh, I have an ode to all the people that have have passed. Okay. And here it is. Everybody can understand that's not for them, that's for the people that have left us. Thank you. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, my friend. Sharing that with those who have gone, that was cool, and I thank you. That's like pouring a little bit of whiskey on the ground in an Irish wake to say a drink for my friend who is planted here. Taking a hit, a long, steady, beautiful hit <clears throat> like that in honor of people that you know who you used to smoke with that are not there. In honor of them is an extremely cool thing. Very cool. Come on, kitties. We got about 10 minutes. Got to be a few more of you guys out there who want to say goodbye. Who else do I know of that may have passed? Uncle Ray was cool. Almost killed himself by flipping his lawnmower on top of himself, riding lawnmower, mind you. Good evening. Clown, this is a very dark show, and uh, I think that... We need to do something to lift it up a little bit. No, no, actually, actually, it's, it's perfect right now, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, it's the perfect opportunity to say just like, damn, you screwed up, dude. And that sucks because I'm going to miss you, so goodbye because you right. screwed up. Well, we can't predict these things, so we never went. We never know when it's going to be the last time we have a chance to say goodbye. So we can't fault ourselves when that happens. So that, don't be don't be so hard on yourself, man. Oh no, like, not I am not hard. I know. I I this is this is just like this is like the icing on the cake. Okay. This is this is for everybody who just just like I was cool that dude, and if I had known, even even if I had known then, mm -hmm. it would have been. Have a safe trip. Mm -hmm. So th this is what that show. Th that's what this show is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got anybody you want to say good trip to? No, no thanks. I'll let someone else call. All right, peace. Oh, you, you, you other two people were there. Don't give up. Don't give up on me. Call me back. You were sitting right there. Oh, I know who. <clears throat> Mr. Roy Orbison. The man who sang Pretty Woman, who could make you cry when you were driving down the road. Goodbye, Roy. Thank you so much. And goodbye, Mr. Cash. Good evening. Yeah, there's that uh, infamous picture of Johnny Cash giving the camera the finger, but that's cool, man. Now you're with your wife and your last album, Rock. 
Goodbye, Mr. Charles. Mr. Ray Charles, goodbye to you for all the fantastic music you gave us. Let's see. Bonham for your great drumming. Mr. Hendrix for setting it on fire and blazing it away. Who else? Mr. Morrison. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Morrison. Yeah. Goodbye, number three. At least you went out racing, which is probably the way you would have had it. Went the way you wanted to, which is cool. Going out the way you probably wanted to is kind of neat. Good evening. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. Is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Oh, I'm on the TV. Um, well, we wanted to know, are you going off the air? No, no, no. What this is, is this is the opportunity to say goodbye to people that you didn't have a chance to say goodbye to. I uh, was talking to a friend of mine on Saturday, and I found out Tuesday that he had passed away from a brain aneurysm. So I was saying goodbye to him. Oh, that's nice. So is there anybody you'd like to say goodbye to? Um, no, not that I could think of. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. Be Consider yourself lucky. Yeah, I guess I am lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Well, we're just sitting here, and we have a uh, lingerie modeling studio, and we like to watch your show all the time. I appreciate that. Yeah. Can I give a shout-out to us? Sure. It's Temptations Modeling and on the web at temptationsmodeling.com. Sweet. We have lots of hot girls. You should come see us. Where are you guys located? We're off of Grand Avenue and I-35. Yeah, Grand Avenue Parkway. Yeah. Let me give you our phone number. It's no, 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 I, 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 no. No phone numbers, please. Trust me. You don't want the phone. You do not want the phone calls that would come with that. <laughs> <laughs> Trust okay, me, well, child. Well, Check us out on the web at temptationsmodeling.com. I tell you what, my, my studio door is always open. If you guys ever want to come down and model, please do. Really? Okay, yes. we'll, we'll have to take you up on that. Yeah, the door is always open. I get here at 9 o'clock. All right, we'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Up. Good evening. Clown, there is somebody that I wanted to say goodbye to and that, and that probably a lot of people would like to say goodbye to if they've known that he's not with us anymore. Who? And this is a local drummer that's been in town for a long time now, and his name was Jody Hinton. And he was actually clubbed or fell over by the Ark uh, in the middle of December. You know the Ark? Yeah, I know the Ark. Anyway, this guy had a head in, a traumatic head injury, is all we know, and he was in Brackenridge for three weeks in the ICU, and now he's in a nursing home and, and needs to be, his diapers changed, basically, and he's oh. not playing drums anymore. Oh, and that listen, sucks. Listen, this guy's name is Jody Hinton. Yeah. All you, all you musicians that are listening... You know who Jody was. Yeah, goodbye, Jody. Around the elephant room. He'd be around the elephant room. Yeah. He'd, he'd be around everywhere, hanging out, playing, trying to get gigs and, and, and playing gigs. And he had a big stint on cruise ships and stuff like that and went to North Texas State. And I'll tell you what, man, he was a good guy, man. And, and something Damn. happened to him. Sorry, sorry to hear he checked out like that. Checked out like that. Now he's in a nursing home in San Antonio cause from a head injury. And we're not, nobody knows what happened. And uh, it was over by the Ark in December. And nope. I guess, you know, that's, that's it, man. This cat was a, was a good drummer, and a lot of musicians out there right now know they recognize that name, Jody. Yep. And, so. I'd, uh, I'd like to say goodbye to, uh, to Danny, the, the unofficial mayor of South Austin. Oh, 
Oh, man. Used to play with uh, Carnell Hurd. Used to play washboard. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew Danny. Okay. And he died of a heart attack uh, last year, man. Goodbye, Danny. That's right. This Peace, is man. This the time to do it, people. This is the time to do it, people. Go ahead and call up. If you know someone, give a shout right now. All right. Hey, thanks for giving us this forum, clown. You know it. Peace. Bye. Good evening. Demon, I'm going to ask you a favor. Not tonight. I have somebody that I want to talk about, though, clown. Okay, you got about 20 seconds. I want to say goodbye to Christy and Sabrina. Because I love them intimately, and now they're gone. Bummer. I love you, clown. I love you too, Demon. Thanks, man. Good night. Good night. You are the last. Good evening. Hey, what's going on, clown? Uh, would you like to say goodbye to anybody? I want to say goodbye. I want to say goodbye to one of my good prostitutes. Her name was Loretta. Good night, Loretta. All right. Peace. You're the last one. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, would you like to say goodbye to anybody? Yes, this is Robot from Planet Robot. If you know somebody with AIDS, give them a hug. It's the best medicine in the world. If you've lost somebody, go say goodbye to them in your own space, in your own way. Peace be with you all, my children. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.